I love you already. You're real. <laughs> I, I hate these fake people. <laughs> you know who I'm talking about too, right? They're out there. Uh, all right. <laughs> Redirecting to Facebook. Let's see if it goes live. That is so cool. I got to figure out how to do that. I'll show you. We can FaceTime and I'll walk you through it. Okay. If you want help, I, I've helped other people. Yeah. Cause I definitely want to, um, like I do podcasts, but just on anchor, but I'd like to do it on zoom. Cause I think it's better when you can go, you know, face to face. And Absolutely. Yes. I'll help you. If you have FaceTime ability, we'll, I'll just walk you through it. Okay. And if it gets over my head, cause I don't know if you noticed, I'm 21 times three plus six, 69. <laughs> it's a good number. Wow. <laughs> I'm not, I'm not going to lie. It's a good number, <laughs> but uh, yeah. So if you want help or my tech guy, if it gets over my head, I'll turn you on to my tech guy. Okay. You just got to get back so to much. me. I appreciate that. Heck yeah. Are you kidding? That's what <laughs> we're all in this together. <laughs> exactly. Don't tell me that one more time or I'll vomit. <laughs> <laughs> Have you ever seen a geriatric vomit? It's not pretty. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Facebook, you guys are listening into our private conversation and that's okay. That's Here right. he is, the man. He's not a myth. He is a legend. Yeah, baby. <laughs> we got him. We got Jordan Jackson. Yes. yes hello, the, hello. Yeah, he just got done watching the Laker game. Woo! Yeah. <laughs> well, at least they didn't lose to my Portland Trailblazers. Shout True. out. <laughs> yeah. The Trailblazers are good, too. Yeah, we got Damian Lillard. Oh, my yeah. gosh. Did you hear a couple of years ago how his brother was gunned down in a parking lot because they thought it yeah. was gay? crazy town? I had to get out of there. They can oh, keep it weird without me. Exactly. <laughs> they know how to do it. They're doing a fine job lately. All right. <laughs> <laughs> so Jordan Jackson has been on tour for three years with Country Wayne, you guys. Country Wayne, yeah. And he's been in several movies. A couple to mention would be Comedy Camp and The Elizabeth Cooper Show. Have you been in them? I don't think so. <laughs> <laughs> so he's also uh, had several TV appearances. He's got a comedy album. And it's called Who is Jordan Jackson, I Do Believe. That is correct. Phew, I hate to... <laughs> I hate to fight with Jordan Jackson, but I will. <laughs> His comedy album is on all platforms except my hooker heels. They're in my closet safely. <laughs> His, he even has an app called Jordan Jackson Comedy. He has his own app. Are you kidding me? I don't, I barely know what an app is. I don't, I thought Instagram was when he went to a party and scored Coke. What do I know? <laughs> He's got two movies on Amazon Prime. Do you? Yeah, I don't think so. <laughs> Maybe some of you do. He's got Skimmers with a Z on the end of it. Swipe Club. Those are his two movies. He's on Facebook and Instagram as who is Jordan Jackson? And that's about all I have to say. Let's get to know him. Thank you for coming. Welcome to the stage, Jordan Jackson. Woo! Hi. <laughs> Hello. Hi there. Nice to meet you in person like this. Yes, you too as well. I'm so happy. So I'm um, so glad that you decided to have me on your show. I'm excited. Yeah. Let's get into it. Let's get into it. Where were you born and raised? <laughs> and uh, up. Upland, California. I know that. It's all, yeah. it's between LA County and Riverside or San Bernardino. That is correct. <laughs> I have a 44 year old daughter that lives in Menifee. Oh, okay. So I, I know the road out there. I lived there for 15 years. Yeah. So yeah. when in your life did you figure out, I think you came out of the womb cracking jokes. Pretty much. Um, it's so funny because my whole life, like people have always told me, like you missed your call. And I never thought I would actually be doing stand up or even acting. I just was always just naturally funny being myself. 
And I could literally, no matter what the situation is, just have people in tears. And um, I decided to do it one day. I took a writing class. And for my graduation, I had to do stand up. Uh, I killed it. I killed my first show. The professor comes up to me and he says, uh, he says, you have something that the rest of my students um, don't have. And that's likability. From the time you get on stage, people like you. And he's like, if you stay with it, you'll kill it because um, you have it, you have an it factor. Yes, you do. It's, it comes through in just your photographs in still <laughs> pictures. You can see the it factor coming through. Appreciate that. <laughs> yeah, I've watched your videos that you put up. They're hilarious. Oh my gosh. So you um, took acting in school. Yes. At some point, I think it was college, right? Yes, took acting and, and, and drama in college. Uh, took several different classes. I took actually took, um, oh, what's his name? Uh, ah, it skips my mind right now, but uh, Alan, uh, Alan, oh, I can't believe it. The, but the guy, he's, he's on um, Greenleaf. And he's also, on, he's been in a bunch of movies. A real, uh, I think it's like David Allen. No, not David Allen Greer, but David I Allen. can't think of it. I Forget can't think of his it. name, but he's he's really, really a, a really great actor and um, learned a lot from him. So, you know, I've taken several classes. Dwayne Boyd in Atlanta. Sorry. Oh, that's fine. So he taught you and he's, and say what else you were saying because that noise uh, bothered me. Uh, Dwayne Boyd in uh, in Atlanta took several classes um, with him to learn a lot in his class too. So, Wonderful. Greg Allen, that's his name, Greg Allen. Greg Allen. <laughs> yeah, finally came back to me. Any relation to Debbie Allen? I don't know. I just know he's a he's, this, this guy has been in everything. Like Greg, he like you look him up. Uh, is that froze on you? Yeah, but we're good now. Okay. <laughs> It says yeah, I'm yeah. unstable. I don't know how it found out my psychological issues, but whatever. <laughs> <laughs> oh, then we're both in trouble. Then. <laughs> no, I'm surprised it's not still stuck. <laughs> <laughs> well, tell, I mean. me, tell me about after college and then you took courses from David Allen and somebody else you said. Dwayne Boyd, yeah. Dwayne Boyd. What did you learn during that time of humbling your natural God-given talent? You humbled it to left brain learning. So right. what, between God-given talent and left brain learning, what did you learn that you thought, oh, I'll take these, but I don't know. They said that I got a natural gift. You know, what did you learn that you wouldn't? Oh, it's, I, I learned a lot because um, it's funny. Everyone thinks that they can act until you really have to act. And what happens is as actors, when you're green and you're first starting out is you'll do a character uh, uh, without putting your natural self in it and that takes away um from the acting because if you're just reading the words and just trying to uh it, you know if you want to be really really good you have to react how you would really act in that situation but as the character and so i learned that um through taking courses because at first you know i thought i was just so good but it took it to another level when you put your natural feelings in it because it's gonna make it more natural. And that's what acting is. It's not wow. just being that character, but having being natural. Okay, thank you. That's very, very articulate. Here's another question for you. So have you, have you noticed, and if so, how? How have you noticed that acting training has helped you do comedy live performances? Oh man, a lot. Okay, yeah. first of all, it allowed me, um, when I'm writing my, my jokes, uh, to take it to another level because at first I would just say the jokes instead of adding act outs, instead of um, 
connecting to my audience and using the third wall sometimes. A lot of stuff that I learned also in stage plays. The stage plays helped my stand up a lot because, wow. because first of all, in the like, you know, if you're doing like television or whatever, it, it, you, you get to redo it until it's right. When yeah. you're doing a live stage play, uh, you have to improvise. You have to, if something goes wrong, you have to bring it back in the best way that you can. I was really, really good at that. It helped me learn my timing. It helped me learn that in the moment, things could go wrong and you got to be sharp. You know, throw that improv in there instead of sticking just to the material. So it helped me a lot. Wow, that's that's brilliant. Okay, I got a question for you. Mm -hmm. My pet peeve in I've been doing comedy six years. I'm a veteran. I have a little brain injury. No big deal. And so certain things drive me nuts when people are not clear trying to explain something, right? Mm -hmm. One of the things people dish out like water in comedy is you have to know how to read a room. Right and they never tell you how to do it. So I like to ask people with really good experience like yourself, what do you define reading a room as? How do you do that? What specific things are you reading when you look around a room? Uh, I'm looking for demographic. I'm looking for age. Um, I'm looking for attentiveness. I'm lo also looking for the situation of the room. Is it, set up, is it even set up for comedy? Um, how the people reacting to certain material. Um, I always come in, you know, most of the time I'm, I'm, I'm featuring, uh, sometimes I'm hosting, but if, if I'm featuring, then I'm watching the host the whole time to see what they're, you know, what they're responding to, what they're not responding to. And that's how you read a room. You know, if they're on a certain subject and they're, they're, they're liking that subject then expand on that rather than just trying to get through your material. Got it. And that's where improv and acting and thinking on your feet come in too. Exactly, exactly. And can, don't be afraid to improv. You know, I used to be afraid in the very beginning of silence. Silence is great. That means they're listening. When they're talking, then you're in trouble. <laughs> <laughs> so say you're doing comedy and they're talking. What do you, what does Jordan, we know who Jordan Jackson is now, but what does Jordan Jackson do if you're on stage and they're just chatty Cathy's? Well, it's funny because I've only had to deal with that uh, a couple of times because I make sure the writing is so interesting uh, that you have to pay attention and you want to hear more. But I remember one time there were these three ladies that were just talking, talking, talking. And I wasn't doing it good at all, so I can understand why they were talking. But I just went over to the table and I was like, excuse me, ladies, when, if you guys could please just respect my bomb then I would appreciate, and they just bust out laughing. I was like, okay, I'm dying out here, but can you respect the bomb, please? <laughs> you gonna respect my bomb. <laughs> and it kind of loosened up the whole room because I wasn't doing that well, but I got a huge laugh on top of that. <laughs> That's hilarious. That's Don't disrespect a bomb. Right, don't disrespect my bomb, man. Come on, I'm dying out here. Let me die with some respect. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh so uh, i'm sure you've done comedy and there's been a white drunk lady in the audience oh so, several times but it's 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 weird is like i'll be on a show where i've noticed that there's a heckler mm -hmm. and a lot of my comedy buddies tell me the same thing they're like well you're kind of you have that like ability to where people that i don't have to deal with hecklers that I, it, it's very few times that it that I get heckled because I command your attention so fast that it's like, yeah, it's a good guy. I'm just come on, let him live. <laughs> it's, <just> like, <laughs> it's the weirdest thing because I'll have ammunition ready to go and I, I never get to use it. <laughs> That's a funny joke. <laughs> that would be so funny. I'm really, I'm really struggling. I need your help, guys. You know, I've got all this material for a heckler, but I never get them. <laughs> right. I'm like, come on. Someone heckle me, please. <laughs> it's funny that you even said that. You know, that's <laughs> cute. Anyway, so you you probably traveled around the entire country. Yes. I've played every major comedy club that you can think of. Um, it's uh, 
you learn something different every time you hit the stage. Just when you, it, and comedy is so different from anything else because just when you think you figured it out and you got it, you know, there's always more that you could learn. It's never ending. You know, I opened for Russell Peters one time and I remember him telling me, he was like, you can only get funnier if you just stick at it. You know, just go, 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 go and never give up. Yes. You know, Who are you some gotta other be willing. Oh, go ahead. No, you go ahead. <laughs> you gotta go ahead. be willing. You gotta be willing to be bad before you're good. And a lot of people give up before they get a chance to get good because you fail down a couple of times. Yes. Some people stick with the same set for 30 years because they're afraid to venture out. It's tough sometimes, you know. You know, some of these some of these comedy clubs, we you know, I've been back four times. So you got to switch it up. It's I write every day, but it's hard for me to, to throw in new material, but I get it done. Yes, yes. How do you write so that you capture the audience right away? Um, I, I got to tell you that I would say that I, I write that way, but sometimes I get up on stage and throw something in at the beginning and it might as well be a throwaway. It's the wrong place to add something at the last minute, you know? Yeah. You don't want to add nothing new unless it's in the middle. Don't, you know, that's just, that's, that's um, because you know, you're going to have great material in the beginning, great in the end. So just no one ever, no one ever remembers the middle anyway. People remember what you do when you come out and when you're leaving. Those are the facts. I come out dancing. They love the dance. Um, Sometimes I'll say something about the fact that I look like Jimmy Walker, J, uh, JJ, and you know that grabs their attention. Sometimes I'll end with that. Sometimes I'll open, but it just depends on the crowd. Have you ever met Jimmy JJ Walker? Yes, I have. And how did that go? Uh, not as good as I wanted it to. <laughs> what a bummer. I'm yeah, sorry. I was like, "Wow, how you doing?" I said, "How you doing?" Um, my name is Jordan Jackson. If uh, you got a couple of minutes, I'd like to talk to you. Yeah, let's keep it at a handshake, buddy. <laughs> I was like, "Okay." <laughs> Wow. Do you yeah. think he'd heard of you? I don't think so. But I, now that I actually, many times I told that story, I think I should have said, hey, I'm a comedian. I'd like to, because, you know, I'm pretty sure there's so many people that are, you know, trying to ask him for stuff and just, you know, to right. trying to pitch him something, you know. So I said, if I had it all, all over to do again, I said, hey, I'm a young comedian. I just came out. And um, if I could talk to you for a couple seconds, cool. If not, then, but a lot of people say that, it's not, they've not had very good experiences um, with them. So, you know, it is what it is, but it was just crazy how fate is that I'm in Orlando to do a show and we just happen to bump each other at the airport. <laughs> That's crazy. Um, I have a similar little crazy story of something stupid. I mean, you, what you said isn't stupid. I said something now that I look back on, what the hell was I thinking, right? Mm-hmm. I'm in my own town, Portland, Oregon, walking around, and I see Alonzo Bowden walking on my streets in Portland, right? Wow. He's like the only black guy in miles, right? Uh -huh. And so I noticed him, not that I see color, it's just he right. was the only one. And so right. I said, Alonzo, I said, I'm a baby comic. I met you in California. I met him at Agua Caliente when he was headlining. I said, um, what are you doing here? And he's like, I'm going to be performing at Helium. And I go, awesome. And he goes, but I have to get going right now. I have to write some jokes. And I go, oh, you want my help? <laughs> I'm surprised he didn't tell you what he told me when I met him. He was like, it's always good to meet someone who's after your job. <laughs> <laughs> I met him in Vegas at the Dirty at 1230. Oh, don't you love that place? Yes, I love it. You know, they had the, the World the world Series of Comedy there the year that I was there. And um, that was my first time. There were so many kids. Ralphie May was there, him and his uh -huh. wife. There's a bunch of comics at the um, Dirty at 1230. Have you ever did that one? I go to it every Friday when they're open. Every wow. Friday. I've been here since December. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. I love That's that cool. place. That's the best show in town. So where are some of the places to perform in... Um, in, in Vegas, uh, I've been out there a couple of times, but just some open marks, like with a guy named Charlie something, I can't remember his name, but um, but I haven't been out there in a while, but I do plan on going back once the world reopens again. <laughs> There's a lot of casinos and a lot of the uh, casinos have showrooms that have comedy. Right now, everything's shut down in the casinos. 
So there are a few shows going on right now in the outlying areas that are not Las Vegas city proper. Oh, so okay. there's some um, Manfred Heim shows in uh, Boulder city and there's something going on in Henderson and there's like a Dairyland drive through comedy show where you can honk your horn, which is confusing to me because I'm a boomer and honk right. used to mean you were horny. So <laughs> I go, <laughs> I'll be so busy all night when they're honking. I'm going from car to car. <laughs> <laughs> Kidding. Hilarious. Do you that, keep that is a different experience, though. Like, I don't think I could. I feed off the energy. I can't feed off the energy of horns, I don't think. No, yeah. but I guess I would try it, but it would be so different. Yeah, I'm also, you know, like uh, I I grew up before the Me Too movement, and you know, my self esteem has been low because uh, nobody can honk at me. <laughs> I'm right, sure. Like, oh no, <laughs> <laughs> no honk, don't touch honk, that. Beep, beep. Yeah, no beep beep, no nothing. Just I wouldn't tap that horn or her. <laughs> <laughs> hilarious anyway back to you <laughs> i digress <laughs> what are you looking forward to after the pandemic with regard to your comedy acting everything well hopefully um some of the shorts that i've wrote um may, may get picked up i'm also looking forward to doing a couple more films um more collaborations uh getting back on the stage because i really miss the stage i haven't performed in over four months and um just just really uh just just getting back to life you know it's so different right now so different do you ever plan on do since you're an actor and you're a funny man do you ever plan on doing a one-man show i've actually did one before you didn't Yes, and it was amazing. Um, I had about 165 people showed up, paid for their tickets and supported. And I was a little ahead of my time because I'd been doing comedy for about two years, but um, they loved it. You know, I, I had my characters and I, and now though, I wasn't as seasoned as I am with the stand-up because my vision was to play my four different characters but to do stand up as those different four four characters to bring myself out and do open up with about 25 minutes of just me doing the stand stand up and then having a host bring the rest of the characters out and and doing that and I just think um it's going to happen one day and now it's going to be super super amazing cuz I'm ready for it awesome that's so great i wrote a one woman play and didn't research how to do it so I would it was back when my brain injury was really bad and uh -huh. I was up there with a notebook flipping pages talking about my life <laughs> wow so bad nobody paid nobody <laughs> but paid you did it you but did at least it. you did it yeah <laughs> nobody said when are you gonna do another one now I'll tell you that <laughs> right but you still that the fact is that you did it and you know you learn something from that and you come back and there was four people at Tyler Perry's first place for, for, wow. for months. So, yeah. you know, you got to hang in there and just do your very best. You know, that's what I like about opening for some of the, some of the greatest comedians in a while. They have such great advice. And, you know, the veteran comics are way different from the, the like semi-seasoned comics, what I say Absolutely. right now. Absolutely. Yeah, the seasoned one really want to help you. You know, I've opened for Tommy Davis and I've um, opened for... Uh, there's probably earthquake. Um, wow, I, there's so many names I can't even remember all the people that I've, uh, that I've opened for. But all of them had great advice. You know, no one's ever you know worried about you being too funny, and that's what's happening sometimes. Yes, it is. Yes, it is. That's sad, but oh well. They gotta yep. make. The, they gotta look in the mirror themselves and sleep at night. So we can. Yep. You know, the thing is, is that like. No matter what we're doing, if you're self-driven, you're trying to be better at what you do every exactly. day. Exactly. Exactly. So let the haters line up. You know, maybe they need to up their game. I don't know. Right. And the thing is, they're not even mad at you. They're mad at themselves because they can't. You know, if you got you, you, you gotta talent is a little bit of it, but you gotta have talent and hustle. You know, 
you're going to be unstoppable if you have that. And that's what I love about moving from California to Atlanta. When I got here, the hustle was already in me because no one's going to give you anything in California. You have got to earn it. And California is different from the South because there's no racism in California. Well, there's social racism, like broke people are like, stay over here. Rich people are like, get away from us broke people. But people were just, that's all I've ever known. You know, there's no, no skin color, no nothing in California. It's just, so when I got to the South, that was completely different. But I just noticed here that people will do things, but they're kind of passive with, they're not super aggressive on, the, on their dreams. Wow. But when I got here, my dream, mom was aggressive on it and I've moved up very, very fast. <laughs> Wow, that's great. So if you're uh, out there and you're driven, go to Atlanta. <laughs> go to Atlanta. You can, you can perform seven nights a week. <laughs> wow, that's crazy good news. Yeah. So this is our first pandemic, Jordan. So how in a comedic way would you, let's say you're on stage right now and you're trying to inspire and make people laugh about the pandemic to hang in there and make it through the rest of it. What would you do to make people forget the nonsense on TV and the nonsense in the world and just have fun and know that they're going to make it? Um, I think because I have been on stage, I think I would have to be as honest as I can, could be and say, um, a lot of us, I have to, because I'll have to speak for everyone who can't say what I'm going to say. And I'll just say this. We found out a lot about ourselves in these times. And maybe we didn't like the people that we love as much as we thought. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm just talking about my kids for now. <laughs> <laughs> you, you find out, you find out things when you're when you, when you're around people longer than you're normally used to being and that's just a fact and there's no way you can't laugh at that because it's so true and it's so factual yeah. now will you say it no <laughs> but you will think it <laughs> you will think it you know like people out there have probably changed their mind who their favorite child is yeah their favorite child their favorite because i mean you for, for a minute, you know, we had to eat different. We had to, you know, it, it, it was the, it, it, everything was different. The pandemic just kind of uh, changed the outlook and what we thought was important wasn't so important. That's right. Yeah. Some people probably changed their wills, took kids out of their will and put All kinds na of stuff, neighbors man. in. <laughs> That's just real, man. Like, I can't get up there and tell a pandemic joke. I'm just going to be like, hey, I think I speak for everyone when I say there's some readjustments that are going to be made after the pandemic. <laughs> Divorces. <laughs> all, oh, yeah. All, all that's coming. You know, it, it, it's a, I mean, the, I mean, it, it's, it's, it's a new, and our lives are changed forever. And I don't know if you do this, but I can't even watch a TV show without going, they're not social distancing. <laughs> you know? I know so it. Like, I'm like, when did this come out? Look how close they are. You know, it's like our mindsets are different. Yes. And they keep confusing me. Like, you know, I just want to talk about how it's so confusing. Like they say social distance, but we're all in this together. Which is it? <laughs> Make up your mind. <laughs> <laughs> Only thing I, I got in here. <laughs> I am, I'm, I'm confused. Uh, which way? We have, which one is it? <laughs> I have this favorite joke. I like to say is that you know I'm so confused. You know, like I, I turn on the news, and first thing they do is tell us to go in our rooms and stay home alone. And I'm like, oh, I have a flashbacks to a really stupid movie. And then, then they say, then they get on the news and they go, and don't stick your fingers in your orifices <laughs> like damn i knew i shouldn't have done that near the tv set <laughs> stupid hey i'm telling you man it's 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 a totally different world and our whole lives are changed because you know and the next question i would ask everyone in the audience like how many people were afraid to cough 
<laughs> I mean, you literally have to hold a cough because, you know, if, if a little one comes out, everyone's looking. You're just like, oh, it wasn't a real cough. It was a little tickle. Just a little tickle. You're like, no. Because I, I have allergies. I have bad allergies. And I was in the UPS store. And I have a mask on, of course, but I was coughing and I couldn't stop coughing. And everyone was looking like, <laughs> and I was just like, okay, I have nothing. I'm just, I'm coughing and I have a mask on, but it was, I didn't want to cough. <laughs> I have really bad, I have brain injury and PTSD. And, and when I'm in a bad mood and I'm triggered about anything, like say there's a tweaker that comes too close to me, I just start coughing. <laughs> it's stay right. the hell away. I don't get anybody back. I think you can rob a bank with a cough. Here, put all the money in the bag. <laughs> <laughs> just put it in the bag you know that song <laughs> hilarious <laughs> oh my gosh anything I think you want to do a skit i think i'm going to do a skit to that yeah you don't need weapons or anything i'll cough on you give it up <laughs> don't make me produce phlegm it's going to be extra right. <laughs> I don't want any dye pack. Leave that. <laughs> Go on and on. I'll right. help you write it. I was a banker. Yeah. <laughs> I'll give you I the inside you. scoop. <laughs> yeah, that works for me. <laughs> well, anyway, is there anything you get as much time as you want right now to just say whatever you'd like to say to people that might tune into this show or podcast? Anything from your heart? Anything at all? Yeah, uh, one thing I can say is no matter how tough things are right now, uh, you know, stay spiritual. Rather, you know, if you don't believe in a higher being, that's fine, but you can still stay spiritual and, you know, stay motivated. Get it. There's so much information out there. Um, you know, set goals, set smaller goals to get to your bigger goals and never give up, never give up and always be an inspiration to people. And, um, and, and learn as much as you can and pass on that knowledge. Don't be so, oh, I'm gonna keep it. I'm not gonna tell anyone. You know, just like you said, you would help with the stuff. You know, you get blessings by planting those seeds. And, you know, I think a lot of people have a lot of talent and they have a lot of success, but they're not planting seeds and they're not helping anyone. So if I can leave any message, just be a blessing to somebody. That's the message that I I say. love that. Thank you so much. Thank you for being Jordan Jackson, the person I've gotten to know here and banter yeah. with. And I'm going to post, when we get done, I'm going to go post my personal thoughts as a wrap up with all your links again. And then um, that'll be out tonight. And then okay. like within one to four days, my tech guy will make this video look like a sitcom. Wow. So it'll have music and credits and, and the curtains open up and you come out and I'll send that to you if you'll share it. Okay, no problem. Thank you so much, Jordan Jackson. Thank, thank Who you is for Jordan me. Jackson on the internet? Well, hopefully you found out. <laughs> <laughs> I did. I did. I love you. I love you too. And I appreciate you for having me on. And uh, make sure we stay in touch. Okay, and one last thing. You're, I don't have a bell, but if I did, I'd ring it right now because you're officially a graduate of Comic Spot. The and, and that means the benefit <laughs> wait there's more the benefit is every month if you have something to plug you can come on for five to seven and plug something i'll pitch you in all right thank you love it <laughs> cool awesome thank all you right. so much and all go right, lakers you. that's right have a good night <laughs> good night love you a lot